Hey there, it's me, Teacher Donna. Thanks for joining me for this multiplication lesson using the Montessori checkerboard. The checkerboard is an elementary level math material that builds on the practice of using physical materials, you know, things we can grasp with our hands, to teach abstract concepts. Today, I'm going to use this concrete material, specifically this printable checkerboard we made here at Project Creative HQ to build numbers, as well as to multiply with single digit and double digit multipliers. You can click the link below to learn more about this product, but you know what? I think I have everything I need for this lesson. Do you? Let's talk about that. Now, if you have the checkerboard material available to you, this would be a great time to gather it and set it up at your workplace. You can pause the video now to collect what you need or just keep it rolling. Either way, I'll be right here waiting patiently for you. Now, let me say, if you don't have the checkerboard material, that's okay. You can just follow along as I complete the questions using my printable checkerboard. You may be interested in knowing that here at Project Creative HQ, we offer two different types of this Montessori multiplication material. You'll find links in the description for our printable and digital versions of this checkerboard material. Okay. Now also for this lesson, you need to be familiar with the Montessori bead bars, their colors and corresponding numerical values. Speaking of bead bars, have you seen our bead bar poster? It's the latest and greatest in math decor. Not only does it look fabulous hanging on the wall, but it doubles as a math aid. This is what we like to call a bonus. All right. By now, you should have everything you need to use the Montessori checkerboard. That's exciting. I invite you to join me in this Montessori checkerboard math lesson. It's going to be great. Before we start multiplying, we need to take a step back and understand what multiplying really involves. So let's look at the parts of a multiplication equation. Here we have an equation written horizontally, 462 times 3 equals 1,386. Let's talk about the three important numbers in this multiplication equation. The first number in the equation, 462, is the multiplicand. It is the number to be multiplied. Next we have the multiplier. 3 in this question, that's how many times we take the multiplicand. And finally, the answer to this multiplication question is 1,386, and the answer in multiplication is known as the product. You'll notice here that you can also write a multiplication question vertically like this. Okay, so now that we know about what's involved when multiplying, let's take a look at the checkerboard material and see what's involved. Warning, the checkerboard material is pretty awesome, so be prepared to be wowed. All right, here we have the same example question as the previous slide, 462 times three equals 1,000, 386. Here we also have a lot of pieces involved. So let's go over what exactly we're dealing with here. Let's start with the multiplicand. The multiplicand is represented along the base of the board with white number tiles. Note that the color of the number on the tiles matches the square color of the number family it's representing. It's important to know that the multiplicand is the number that is going to be multiplied. All right, moving over here, we have the multiplier. 
The multiplier is represented vertically on the board using gray number tiles. There's a green three on this gray number tile and it's next to the green unit square. We are going to take the multiplicand three times. We have the product and the product, which is the answer in a multiplication question, will be represented on the bottom row of the checkerboard in these. Okay, that's a lot of information. <laughs> we should get into solving some multiplication questions using the checkerboard together. Before we start multiplying, we need to get our mathematical minds warmed up to the challenge. How about a math joke to wake the brain up a bit? I have a good one for you. Okay. Which tool is best suited for multiple math problems? I'll say that one more time. Which tool is best suited for multiple math problems? Take a second to think this one over. And while you are thinking this one over, let me give you a hint. Think of the four basic operations in math. That's a good hint. Let's see what the answer is. Which tool is best suited for multiple math problems? The multipliers. Multipliers? Multipliers? Get it? Cute, right? Why don't we continue to warm up by using the checkerboard to build some numbers? That'll be a great way to get familiar with this Montessori math material. Let's practice building and reading numbers on the checkerboard. To do this, I'm going to use these number building command cards. These task cards are from a free set we have created for you. They're great for getting comfortable with the checkerboard and a great review of number family recognition. You can find a link in the description where you can get your own copy of this free set. Using the color-coded bead bars and the checkerboard, we are going to build this number, 38,946, horizontally on the bottom row of the checkerboard. All right, now when we build numbers on the checkerboard, we need to keep our number families in mind. And speaking of number families, I always like to start building numbers uh, with the unit. So I'm going to start with the number that is in the unit's spot here, which would be a six. So I am going to use the purple six bead bar. And I'm going to line it up vertically because this is going to be my final answer here. So my final answer stands tall vertically. All right, so the next spot here I'm looking for is the tens number and the tens spot is the four. So I will get the yellow four bead bar. Next, we have the hundreds square. I'm looking for a nine to go in the hundred square. The nine bead bar is blue. All right, we're almost there. We need an eight for our thousands spot. An eight for our thousand spot. The eight bead bar is brown. And then finally, for this number, we need a three in the 10,000 spot. And that gives us the number 38,946. All right, there we have it. We built a number on the Montessori checkerboard. Before we clean the board and do another question together, the great thing about these command cards is I can turn it around on the back and see if I, in fact, did the question correctly. And so I can double check with my number families and my bead bars and confirm that we did a really good job. All right, so now we can clean the board and get ready for our next question. Cleaning the board is an important part of this math activity and a great way to learn how to stay tidy. 
Okay, here we have another question. We are going to build this number. What I like about this card is that it's written out in words. Uh, so it's a nice way to practice reading or and seeing numbers in a different way. We are going to build the number 853,416. Okay. Again, I like to start building my numbers with the units. So I'm going to take a look at this number 16. So I need a six in my unit square. And because the number is 16, I will need a one in the tens square. I might have to read the number to myself a couple of times. Uh, 853,416. So I need a four a yellow four bead barred for my hundred. All right, now how many thousands? Let me see, 853,000. 3,000 here, so I need my three bead bar, the pink bead bar. 853,000, so I need a five, a blue five bead bar. And finally, we have eight, so I'm going to use the eight bead bar. The eight. All right. So here we have eight hundred fifty-three thousand four hundred sixteen. And again, to double check or to check ourselves to self-correct, we can flip this over and in fact see yes, 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 yes. We did a good job. We are on a roll. Why don't we clean the board again and do one more question together? Okay, so we're going to build one more number together. It's a big one. We have 7,642,000. You know what I like to do. I'm going to start with the units and I will look for a nine bead bar to put into my unit square, a nine bead bar. Next is my tens square and I'm going to need a three to make the 39. Now this is interesting. I have zero to put into the hundred square so it will be empty. We'll leave this one empty. We'll go to the thousands, there are two thousands, so we need a green bead bar. And then we have four, 42,039. All right, now there, we keep going, this is a big one. We have 642,039. And to make this number complete, we are going to put a seven bead bar here, the white seven bead bar. And I think we have it, 7,642,039 is what we have represented on the board. Again, just to double check, I will turn this card over and compare. It looks great. So we did it, we have completed our warm up. We'll clean the board and you know what? Building numbers on the checkerboard is a great way to get familiar with number families and how they make numbers. This is what you're here for, right? Multiplication using the checkerboard. Let's start with a single digit multiplier question and get to know how the checkerboard works. I have a question for us to work through together. Here it is, 57,613 multiplied by four. The first step is to represent the multiplicand and the multiplier with number tiles. I like to represent the multiplicand horizontally and then I represent the multiplier vertically. So here I'm going to have my multiplicand 57,613, and then I will place my four, my green four on the gray number tile. I'll place that beside the unit. 
you'll notice that the number tiles match up with the color of the number family. Make sure yours does too. We're going to take each number in the multiplicand four times because, well, that's our multiplier. So here we have the unit square and we have a three. So I'm going to take the three bead bar four times and I invite you to do the same thing. Now when I put these in my unit square, I'm going to represent them horizontally. All right, so I have one, two, three, four. All right, I have the, the three bead bar four times. Now what I need is the one bead bar. I need that four times. All right, so we have one, two, three, and four. All right. Next is the six. We'll take the six bead bar four times. The six bead bar, which is purple, we will take that four times. One, two, three, four. Great. All right, we have the seven bead bar. We're going to take the seven bead bar four times. One, Two, three, four. All right, and finally we have the five bead bar. We're going to take the five bead, the five bead bar, four times. One, two. Okay, this is great. Each of our squares have bead bars in them, but we want to find the final answer. We want to find the product to this multiplication question with a single digit multiplier. And so we're looking to only have one bead bar in each square. And how we're going to do that is starting in the unit square and working our way up across the board, we're going to add together all of the bead bars in each square, starting with the unit. So I'm going to skip count by threes to start here. And let's see, we have three, six, nine, 12. So here I have 12. I need to represent 12. Now here's the thing, I'm going to carry over the one from my 12 and, and it's going to look exactly like 12. I'm going to represent it like this. I'm going to take this 12 away. Oops, good line. And I'm going to represent my 12 like this. All right, so I have the two from the 12 in the unit square and I have the one from the 12 in the 10 square, that makes sense. All right, now because I, I, I now have only one bead bar left in this unit square, it's going to be, it's part of my final answer. So I'm going to represent it vertically. All right, now I'm going to move on to the 10 square, the next square over, and I'm going to put together all of the beads in this square. So here I'm going to add, I have one, two, three, four, five. There are five beads here. So I'm going to exchange those five beads because remember, I want to have a single bead bar in each square to represent the answer. All right, so there I have one bead bar, one bead bar, one blue, five bead bar. All right, we're making progress here. So now I'm going to move over to my hundreds square and we have the six bead bar. We have it four times. I'm going to skip count six, 12, 18, 24. All right, so I need to represent 24 here. And what I'm going to do is I, I need two bead bars. I need a two and I need a four to represent 24. And just like I did in our units square, I'm going to make it look like 24, 24. I have the two and the four for 24. And because now I only have one bead bar in this 
hundreds square. I'm going to be represented vertically. And this two is going to be joined with all of these seven bead runners. Okay, we're getting there. We can skip count here. We have seven, 14, 21, 28, 29, 30. All right, we have 30 here, that's interesting. So what I need is one bead bar, I need a three. And there will be nothing, there'll be zero bead bars in the thousand square here. All right, and now I will skip count. I have five, 10, 15, 20, one, two, three, 23. So what I need to do is I need to represent 23. And again, I can make it look like 23, 23. And because this is a final answer, I'm going to stand them up vertically. And here you can see the final answer to this question. 230,452. Let's do another question with a single digit multiplier together. But first, we must clean the board. Okay, here it is. Another single digit multiplier question for us to go over together. Here we have 1,245,308 times or multiplied by five. So we're going to take this multiplicand and we're going to take each of these numbers in the multiplicand five times. All right, let's do it. I'm going to start first with the eight beads because that's in my units square. That's the number associated with that. I'm going to take the eight bead five times. All right, so here is my eight bead. One, two, three, four, five. All right, now I'm going to take my zero bead five times, or I can say I'm going to take the five bead zero times. So what we're really doing here is we're leaving this 10 square, we're leaving it empty zero times. We'll move over to the hundreds square and we'll take the three bead, we'll take that five times. One, two, three, four, All right, oh, look at this. We're gonna take the bead of five. We're going to take it five times. We'll do that. One, two, three, four, five. Next, we will take the bead of four and we will take it five times. One, two, three, four, five, and five. Oh, no, we have a few more here to go. So now we're going to do the bead of two five times. The green bead of two, I will do that five times. One, two, three, four, and one more is five. All right, now we have one more step here. And we're going to take those one, those one beads. We're going to take one beads five times. <laughs> All right. Or we could take the five bead once. That also makes sense. But we're going to continue in this process of taking the numbers of the multiplicand, the amount of times the multiplier states. So one, two, three, four, five. That's great. Okay, so again, what we wanna do here is we want to end up with one bead in each of these squares to give us a, a final answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the unit square and I'm going to skip count or, or add all of these beads together. All right, so I'm going to start with eight, 16, 
24, 32, 40. All right, so I need to represent 40 using B bars. And what that entails is, is really just the B bar of 4 because there is no B bar for 0. <laughs> so here I would put my beat of 40, my beat of 4 in the 10 and the no beads <laughs> in the units because it is 0. And because this is the only bead here, I will turn it vertically. We have started our product, our final answer. All right, moving over to the hundreds square, I have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. All right, so I'm going to take all of these beads, 15 to be exact, and I'm going to turn that into the simplest form of 15 with a 1 bead and a 5 bead. So I have 15 here. Because I only have one bead left in this square, I'm going to turn it vertically. It is representing uh, part of our product. All right, moving on over to the thousands. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26. All right, I need to replace these beads with a representation of 26. So that will require the green 2 bead and the purple 6 bead. And I will do 26. Again, I'm placing my 6 bead vertically because there is only one bead in this square now, and it is part of our product. Over to the 10,000s, we have the 4 bead 5 times. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, plus the 2, 22. And you know what, what I can do is I can leave that two there and I'll get myself another two to represent 22. There's a lot of twos in there. All right, so I have 22. And because in that 10,000s blue square, there's only one bead bar remaining, I will turn it on its vertical stance to represent part of the product. Okay, we're almost there. 2 has been taken 5 times with a bit of exchanging in there. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. All right, so we need to represent 12. I'm going to leave one of those 2s in there. And I will need to represent the tens portion of the number 12 with a 1 bead. Because there is only one bead bar left in this, 100,000 square, I will turn it vertically, and here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to replace all of these ones with one six bead bar. And again, I will stand it vertically because that is my final answer. We now have a product to the question, and the question was 1,245,000 308 times 5, and now we know the answer to that question is 6,226,540. Good job. Okay, like we always do, it is time to clean the board. And at this point in your multiplication on the checkerboard experience, you have a couple of options. You can um, continue practicing with single digit and solidify those skills. You can also keep watching this video and get into the double digit multiplier multiplication questions on the checkerboard if you feel ready for that. If not, that's something you can come back to when you are ready. When you feel confident with single digit multiplication on the checkerboard and are ready for a challenge, Come back to this video and watch this section. Right now, we are going to get into multiplying with a double digit multiplier. And let me tell you, it is really fun and pretty spectacular. So as you can see, the setup on the checkerboard is similar, but now we will need two gray number tiles to represent the multiplier vertically, since we are dealing with a double digit multiplier. All right, so here's a question we can try together. 
here our multiplicand is 64,582 and our multiplier is 23. So we have a double digit multiplier here. But don't worry, we're going to continue the process similarly as to how we started before. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with our unit of the multiplier, the three, and we're just going to take each of these bead bars three times. So let's see how that works. We need the two bead bar three times. All right, now we need to take the eight bead bar three times. Next, we have the five bead bar three times. Okay, now we're going to take the four bead bar three times. All right, and then the last part of the multiplicand here is the six bead bar, and that is also three times. Okay, great. Now you could go ahead and simplify each of these squares so that there is only one bead in there. But I like to move on to my, my double digit um, multiplier section and complete that row before I get to do anything else. I like to, to see the whole process together. So follow me as, as we go. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to take each of these bead bars from the multiplicand, and we're going to now take them two times. We're going to take them two times and set it up in this second row that uh, starts with the 10 square, the blue 10 square. I have a blue two on a gray tile to tell me that this is my, my double digit multiplier. So right now I'm going to take the two bead bar, I'm going to take it two times. The eight bead bar, two times. The five bead bar, two times. The four bead bar, two times. and the six bead bar two times. Okay, great. So essentially what we have done here is we have found our partial products. We have found parts of the answer, or I guess you can say half of the answer. What we need to do is put all of this information together. And how that works is quite magical here on the checkerboard. Let me walk you through it. So if you've noticed, if you look vertically across the board, you'll see that not only do these colors match, uh, but that pattern continues across the board. So what we're going to do here is we're going to carry down we're going to move down all of the beads from the second row, but we're going to move them vertically so that they match into the appropriate colored square. So I'm going to take these two, two bead bars and I'm going to slide them down here. I'm going to do the same thing for what's in the red box up here. And I'll continue to do this across the board until all of the bead bars have successfully made it to the first row. Okay, so what you have here is a very colorful first row of um, boxes with plenty of beads. But here's the thing, from learning the last 
questions that we've done here on the checkerboard, we know that we to have our final answer to get that product, you only want one bead bar in each square. So what we have to do here is we need to collect what's in these bead bars to make it so that there is only one bead in each square. Again, we're going to start over here with the units and I'm going to do a little bit of skip counting. Two, four, six. All right, so I'm going to replace these beads with one six bead bar. And I'm going to stand it up nice and tall vertically because it is part of the final answer. All right, next we have eight, 16, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Well, interestingly enough, I have the information here to make 28. <laughs> And so that is what I will do. 28 is what I have left in here. So one, I will carry over the two and I will leave the eight, but the eight I will turn vertically because again, we have uh, created another piece of our product. All right, here we have five, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. All right, so I need to represent those beads with 33. And that could look like this. 33. And I'm going to turn this three vertically because it is another piece of our product. All right, we're moving closer and closer. Here I have 4, 8, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 25 is what we need to represent here, and I can do that like this. All right, so we have 25. And again, because this is part of our product, I'm going to stand that up nice and tall. All right, so here we have 6, 12, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 28, another 8. All right, so I'm going to represent the 28 like such. And again, I'll turn the 8 vertically. And here we go. I have 6, 12, 13, 14. All right, I need to, to represent the 14. Okay. Here's my one of the 14. So that would be 14. And now these are both part of the product. Actually, we did it. <laughs> Can you believe it? You did a double digit multiplier multiplication question on the checkerboard. And that question was 64,582 times 23. And now we know that that equals 1,485,386. All right, good job. I think we should clear the board and maybe try another question together just to, to really make sure we get the hang of this. Okay, here's another question we can try together. On the board here, as our multiplicand, we have 89,167 multiplied by 31. All right, so we have our double digit multiplier we have our multiplicand. What we need to do now is, again, we're going to start with this first row of the unit in our multiplier. And I'm going to take each of these parts of our multiplicand one time. So I'm going to take the seven bead bar one lonely time. And I'll do the same thing for the six bead bar. I'll take it one time. I'll even take the one bead bar one time. Next is the nine bead bar once. And to complete this first 
part of the product, I'm going to take the eight B bar one time. Okay, great. So we have completed the, the first partial product of our question. And now we're going to move on to the second digit in our double digit multiplier, the three. And we're going to take each of the numbers in the multiplicand, we're going to take them three times. So let's start with the seven bead bar. I'm going to take that three times. All right, and then I'm going to take the six bead bar three times. I'm going to take the one bead bar three times. I'm going to take the nine bead bar three times. And to round it all out, I will take the eight bead bar three times. Okay, great. So now we have both of our par partial products for this answer. But what we really want here is just one complete product. And to obtain that product, to get that product, what I need to do is, is to add a bunch of these bead bars together. Before I start doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to slide the bead bars from the second row. We're going to slide them down vertically so that they connect and match up with the same color square. And we're going to bring them all the way down to that first row. So I'm going to take these three seven bead bars here and I'm going to slide them down so that they're all on the first row. Great. And I'll take these three six bead bars and I'll take them down to the first row. And I'll continue to do that across the board. I'm going to take everything down diagonally following the same pattern of color. And there we go. All right, so now we have all of our bead bars on the first row, which is great. But what we need to do is ensure that each square only ends up with one bead bar. And to do that, we're just going to, to collect the values. We'll add them up. We can skip count as well. Uh, we're going to see what we have in each square, starting with the unit square, as always. Now, there is nothing, uh, there is already one bead bar in this unit square, and that's great. So I'm going to turn that right up vertically, and that demonstrates our product has, has begun to be formed. All right, so now I'm going to start, I'm going to start with my seven bead bars. So I have seven, 14, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. All right, 27. So I'm going to leave one of these seven bead bars. And all I need now is the, the two for the 20 that I'll carry over to the next box. So you can see here we have 27. I'm going to turn that seven onto, uh, into a vertical stance because it is now part of the product. All right, let's see what we can do here now. I have six, 12, 18, 19, 20, 21. Well, that works out quite nicely because I can make the number 21 as such. And I will just turn my one vertically. Now we have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, I'm going to use this one to carry over. And now I need to find myself a four to put in the thousands square. All right, so let me start with these nines here. So I have nine. Actually, if I give this eight one more bead, so I have nine. So I'm essentially dealing with four nine beads in here. So I have nine, 18, 27, 36. All right, so in here I have 36. I need to replace and represent 36. 36, 36, I'll put that standing 
vertically as we are almost finished finding this product. All right, so I have 8, 16, 24, 25, 26, 27. All right, there's a lot of sevens in this number. 27 would look like this, 27. And because this is part of our answer, the product, I'm going to put it on its side. And my friends, we have done it. We did our second double digit multiplier and multiplication question on the checkerboard. And the question was 89,167 times 31. And we can see that that answer is 2,764,177. Wow. You did it. And you did it very well. Doesn't that feel good? I think you should be very proud of the efforts that you have put in here, not only with single digit multiplication work, but double digit multiplication work as well. Way to go. Now you're not getting off that easy. You still have to clean the board because that is the responsible thing to do. When we clean the board, we are learning about responsibility and we are learning to take care of our things. There, good as new. And that's it, we are done. I just wanna say thank you for joining me today for this multiplication lesson with the Montessori checkerboard. You should be very proud of the work you did today. And if you ever forget how to use this material, just pull up this video and we can walk through the steps again together. It'll be fun. All right, so that's it for now. And uh, I hope to see you next time in my classroom. Have a wonderful day. Bye.